We're gonna do something crazy today, guys. We're going on a Tinder type adventure through the city. I found a stranger online to show us around. And what city is this? Let me ask you. What is the capital of Mizoram? Ah, you don't know, right? I'm in a state which most people don't know exists and nobody can name the capital of it, that's for sure. It's Aizol in Mizoram. So let's go and meet this stranger right now. I hope he's not a drug addict, a, a murderer, a stalker, an MNS supporter, or one of those crazy scammers from Connaught Place in Delhi because they are after me. Let's go, let's do it. Let's hope for the best. Dino, Hello. what's up, bro? Hello. It's so good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. And too. thank you for coming. Eh, no problem, no big deal. You know, a guy just messages you on the internet saying, What's up? Come meet me. You're okay? I'm okay. Thank awesome, you. awesome. I'm so glad because it's been hard to find information on eyes all yeah, online. Yeah, yeah, online it's quite difficult. There's nothing, yeah. so maybe we can change this with this video, yeah. you know? We'll make a video of all the great places to see and what to eat and what to do here. All right, so I've met Dino and he's not a murderer, he's not a stalker, he's not crazy, he's all good. So it is safe to meet people online sometimes, right? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> it's totally safe with me. Ah, yeah, I'm so happy to be here with Dino. And we're going to go explore Aizol today. Dino has brought me to a traditional Mizo village. This is going to be different. So Dino, Tell me yeah. about yourself, man. Like, what are you studying? Uh, yeah, I'm in uh, medical school, you can say. Like, Whoa, um, doctor. Yeah. You can help me with my stomach infections, man. Uh, actually, I'm doing uh, <laughs> dentistry. Oh, okay, I cool. I finished my final exams. I'm waiting for my result. Great. And where did you find out about me? How did you know about me? Uh, a friend of mine from Nagaland. Huh. Uh, maybe he has heard or seen you from earlier. Like, he just sent me a link of your profile. Yeah. And he uh, just asked me uh, to contact you. So you've never seen any of my videos? No, not at all. Wow! This is a Dishi Dao Bawa. This is Indian hospitality. This guy has no idea who I am. No idea about my YouTube channel. He's just seen a few photos on Instagram and his friend told him to come and take me around today. Those normal houses? Yeah. Then? They... What's this thing hanging from up here in the middle of the village? Oh, what I actually they used to do is this. An animal, maybe sometimes they used to hang. Yeah. Sometimes, like... Back in the day, like our people were like headhunters, you know? Yeah. So when they go and kill somebody, yeah. they bring home their heads. Wow. They to hang the heads here of the enemies. This could be a human head hanging up there. Wow. These guys were headhunters. You might have noticed, so nearly everything in this village of Falcon is made of bamboo. The walls, the floor. Got a little bit of wood here holding up the structure, but everything else. It's completely bamboo. Even their eating utensils, the things they use to cook with, everything. It's totally unique and they have these amazing sliding doors and sliding windows that they've innovated on their own. And behind us right here is the, the chief's house. It's the largest house here in the village. It's huge. And then you've got a town hall right behind me there. And then maybe one of the top warriors houses. And warriors here, they used to have to prove themselves through hunting. They might have had to hunt a lion, a tiger, a deer, or even people. They used to be head hunters here. And they display the heads of the animals they killed or the people they killed here in the middle of the village square. I'm in the Mizo Villages meeting house now. And this is where the elders would come and sit at the very back here. There'd be a bonfire going in the middle. There'd be men wrestling and sitting around. And it's like a place where everybody comes to meet and where issues are solved. And so if there were any issues, if some wild animals had attacked the domesticated animals or the animals they were raising here or anything like that, the people would come and bring those issues to the warriors and the elders sitting here and they would go out and solve that issue. So bro, this is a very strong like warrior community. Yes, yes. And I guess you call that like tri a tribal community. Yeah. So like uh, back in the day, uh, they, we were divided into many, many tribes and yeah. we were kind of constantly at war with different villages and all. Yeah. That's uh, until like the uh, late 1800s and yeah. the 1900s, where we started becoming civilized, you know. 
the actually English missionaries started right, coming don't, here. Don't say it like that. Don't say we became civilized. Like we started that, to that's become... someone's interpretation of it, right? Like, yeah. no, 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 there's nothing wrong with being tribal. You can't call it uncivilized. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a very that, um. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, modernized, maybe? Uh, maybe you know? Things change, put things it that change, way. Yeah, things okay, change. Okay. From the late 1800s to the uh, 1900s. Till then, yeah. it was like this, you can say. Yeah. Wow. It's beautiful, man. There's no one living here now, though, anymore. Oh. It's all quiet and it's just a tourist attraction now. And that's a little bit sad because this is Miso culture and it was like this for how many hundreds of years, you know? Yeah, then all of a sudden it changes. Dino, so in the cab I asked that driver how many foreign tourists has he seen and he's seen none. He said none. Is that normal here? Like you guys don't get a lot of foreigners coming to no, Mizoram? No, not much at all. Like very few here and there you can see. Yeah. I had just a handful that's it. Not much. Wow, I feel so lucky to be here. And it is quite hard to get here guys. Like you can fly in but it can get expensive. So I took a sumo here and it was a 12 hour journey from the nearest kind of town you can, you can take a sumo from. But it's totally worth it. If you guys didn't know, Aizol is a hill station. And you guys can forget Shimla. You guys can forget any hill station that you know. Aizol is the most beautiful hill station I've ever been to. The most clean, the most beautiful, and the friendliest people. I've been to Shimla, I've been to McLeod Gunge, I've been to Manali. And these places are overrun with people. Yeah. My god, last time I was in Manali, it was like being in Chandani Chok. I'm not kidding you, I've got photos. It was terrible. Check out this view, guys. Oh my god. Is this a hill station or what, guys? So this is Aizol from left to right. And behind this big mountain is where you can't see part of Aizol. Whoa! <laughs> that rock is gone. Boom! That could have been me. Alright, it's time for another selfie here in Mizoram. And people don't speak much English here. But lucky I've got Dina here to translate. People are very cute and sweet here. They don't just come up and grab you and ask for a selfie. They, they ask you really nicely. And these people don't know that I'm a YouTuber. They just know that I'm a foreigner. And yeah, you don't get many foreigners here. so. Places like this, people want a selfie for foreigner to say, you know, look who I met, the strange animal from New Zealand. A lot of people come here on this walk just for this beautiful bridge we're gonna hit in a second. Lots of girls I'm told too, let's see. Hi, how are you? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Whoa, this bridge is a little bit rickety. That. Yeah, exactly. The view from this bridge is amazing. Eyes all there. The rest of the mountain range here. This is what heaven looks like, guys. Wow, we're nearly in the clouds here. It's as beautiful as going to lay in the dark these kind of untouched places. Mizoram is definitely untouched, natural and pure. We're back in Aizol now and we're on Dino's scooter. And we're gonna go eat, we have to eat right now. But the taxi driver, my God, the fares are incredible here. Something else I noticed here is that everybody loves their motorcycles here. Everybody's riding like a nice like Suzuki Gixxer or a Honda CBR or a nice Royal Enfield. People really spend a lot of money on their bikes here. They're really proud of their bikes as well. Besides the crazy taxi fares here, the other bad thing is the traffic. So you have to have a scooter to get around to Aizol. One other thing I love about Aizol is how clean it is. You guys see how clean this place is. Man, I'm falling more and more in love with Aizol. So I guess you guys can say my Tinder date has turned out to be an exceptional date. My God, so lucky. At the beginning of this video, I described our meeting as like a Tinder date. Yeah. Because we've never met. And we're strangers on the internet, right? Yeah. So it's like that, but it's turned out good, no? Yeah, it's really good. He, he's just saying that. <laughs> it's better for me no, than it awesome. is for him. Yeah. Way better for me. Okay, there's no beer here actually. They don't serve it until night time. And actually I'm surprised you can even find beer here. 
this is meant to be a dry state. So what I have is this very, very beautiful Oreo shake. I stick to milk, guys, but my god. How can you not want to eat that, drink that? Tell me beer's better than that in the comments. Tell me. You can't. The food's come and so has Saya. Say hello, Saya. And so what we're going to eat is we've got beef in black pepper sauce. And yeah, I said beef. So Moody's beef ban, it doesn't extend to the estates. And they kind of almost laugh at it a bit here in the northeast. We also have a salad and kung pao chicken. And kung pao chicken is a dish I first tried in Hong Kong. It's like chicken with a lot of chili, capsicum, and cashew nuts. And we're going to finish it all off with rice. When you're in the northeast, You'll see when you walk into a restaurant, sometimes they'll just have five things. It'll be chicken with rice, beef with rice, vegetables with rice, and a couple of other kinds of things. So it's just something and rice, something and rice. Rice is eaten with everything here in the Northeast. So you're a big sports fan, bro. So tell me, what is Mizo Ram known for when it comes to sports? What are you guys the best in? When it comes to football, Mizo Ram is the number one. Yeah. Number one. Say yeah. Uh, and we have one of the biggest leagues. Uh, Basketball leagues, yeah. basketball leagues. We call it MSL, uh, MSL Mizoram Super League. Awesome. Uh, intense game, man. But actually, tonight we are going to eat some real miso food. This is not miso food. This is kind of like a little bit of international flair. We're going to eat some real miso food and I think try some, some weird stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah. How weird can it get though? I don't know. You'll have to find out. Nice bike, bro. It's like a Cafe Racer Royal Enfield, eh? What's that? Electro Classic. Wow, Electro Classic. All right, we're here at the most beautiful church in India, Solomon's Church. And just wait, you're going to see how amazing it looks. But first, I want to talk about Indian identity for a second. So you might be thinking by now, hey, hang on a minute. These Northeast Indians, they look a little different. And yeah, you'd be right, because India borders onto China and Myanmar, you have more Oriental features of Indians in Northeast India. It's also like in Kashmir. In Kashmir, you'll find people who look exactly like me. The blue eyes, fair skin. We typically think of Indians just as North and South Indian looking people, but India is so diverse. And that's one of the beautiful things about India, it's diversity. You'll find people who look completely different to each other, but we're all still Indians, 110%. And that is just something spectacular and special that you'll find here in India. It's gonna be Guys, you know I'm not one for churches, but like you have to admire the beauty of this, whether you're Christian or not. The white marble, it's just the most beautiful church I've ever seen in India, and I've seen a few guys. All right, let's do it. Dino, where are we going to go now? We'll be going to a hillside uh, vantage point where we'll get a nice city view along with sunset views and all. Then we're going to eat miso food. That's how we're going to end the night. Racing to catch the sunset. The sun sets really early here. It's gonna start setting around 4 p.m. and it'll be dark by 5 p.m. It's totally crazy and different here. Meow. 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 Are you gonna bite me or what? You are going crazy, kitty. Whoa. Meow. Jello, come watch the sunset. Aja, Aja. Let's start off. Abhi Chalo! Good man, holding the door open for a cat. What a sweet guy. You're a bit noisy. We're gonna leave you there. Bye. Guys, just feast your eyes on this view. Wow, the sun's gonna come down right over the city here.
Can you guys see those beautiful city lights behind me? My god, I am so happy here in Aizal. This is just a stunning, stunning place. All right, before we eat dinner, one thing I noticed here in Mizoram is that culture here is quite westernized. So my friends here, they love English music. They love western music. They love wearing western clothing. They're very influenced by western culture, western fashion. And their mindsets and the way they think and act are more western than kind of North Indian, I would say. And and not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing to saying it's quite different to the rest of India. All right, we're here at this restaurant here in Aizal to try some traditional miso food. And you can see by the decor here, you've got that bamboo again, that traditional miso kind of house is how they used to live. I can't drink this, but what are you drinking, bro? Rice beer, we call it Zufang. Zufang it's called. And it's basically rice beer. Yep. Cool. Let me see. It looks orange in this light, but it's not right. It's white. This rice beer is quite difficult to describe. It's it's very a little bit sour. It's a little bit creamy. It's a little bit watery, and it's it's made from boiling the rice. And I'm not sure what else happens after that. What happens yeah, after you boil the rice? You ferment it. Okay. And you take the water out of that, and you've got rice beer. I should try it, hey? Tige, torosa, torosa. Boho torosa. Oh, it's stronger than I thought it would be. You told me it wasn't going to be strong, man. This is like... It's way stronger than beer. It's more on the level of a spirit to me, anyway. You really get that taste of alcohol. It's, it's sweet, they must have added sugar to it, I guess. And you have the air sugar, man. Yeah, a lot of sugar, sweet, a little bit sour, and there's not much of a taste. It, there's no really strong taste like beer. Like, I hate the taste of beer, it's disgusting. So this is really easy to drink and, and tasty, actually. Wow. Uh, I can see why you guys drink this over Kingfisher or whatever. Nice. <laughs> way better, way better. These guys in the Northeast are doing it right, and you get this rice beer across the Northeast, actually. Last time I saw it was in Nagaland. Miso food is totally different to anything else that I've ever had in India. You get a pound of rice, you get 12 chutneys, all totally different in flavor, a basic meat curry, a dal and tofu soup, and then this, what I call samba, but it's nothing like samba. It's a really thick vegetable soup with a ton of spinach in it. And each of these chutneys has its own flavor, their own unique flavor, and it's just, ah, they taste amazing. They might not look amazing, but when you taste them, when you get these different flavors in your mouth, you're just like, wow, where did that flavor come from? How did they do that to this vegetable? The only weird thing here on the plate is one of the chutneys is made of pig skin cooked in pig fat. But it's not as bad as you might think. The skin just tastes like you're eating on pork, that's it. It's not much different to pork. And it's quite creamy actually as well. The beef curry, it's a really, really simple beef curry. It tastes like a meat masala, a lot of water, there's absolutely no cream, it's totally different from North Indian curries. It's a really watery meat masala curry. The pork has actually a really Chinese flavor from what I've tried in Chinese cuisine. It's got this really light soupy flavor and then these massive chunks of pork and this green leafy vegetable in it. It tastes more like a vegetable curry than it does an actual meat curry. The soup is very vegetable-y. That is so not a word, right? Guys, so that was an amazing day. Like, I couldn't have asked for anything better. And like this morning, we were strangers, right? And now we're friends. And so thank you so much, Dino, especially. Thank you so much for picking me up and, and taking me around. We're back where we started this morning. And can you believe that could all happen from some messages with some strangers from the internet? It was an incredible day. And I have fallen in love with Aizol, my god, it's one of my favorite places now alongside New Delhi, Vadodara, and Humpy. And actually, this kind of hospitality does not surprise me in India anymore. This is Indian hospitality in action. Indians love to show you their culture, their 
food in this city. This is just Indian hospitality, and this is how Indians treat guests. They treat guests like God here. So thank you, India. Thank you to my friends that I met today. Good night. Get your butts to Aizal if you want to have a great time.